Please turn in your Bibles tonight to the book of, Gen of Genesis. I'd like to read from Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45. The Word of God here is talking about the uh, occasion where Joseph is now second in command or number one under uh, Pharaoh. He was one that had tremendous power and authority. Uh, he had told them that there were going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine and he taught them that they needed to store up during the seven years of plenty in preparation for the seven years of famine. And so they did that. Pharaoh listened to the counsel of Joseph and uh, you remember Joseph had been sold by his brothers and he had experienced a lot of trouble in his life and now God has lifted him up and he's uh, uh, in a position of great authority and power in Egypt. Uh, his brothers are still back in Canaan land, but the famine was in the land of Canaan. and They were experiencing tremendous amount of anguish and lacking food uh, as they were in the land of Canaan. Egypt had plenty because God had prepared them by instructing Joseph to uh, put up a lot during the, the years of uh, plenty for the years of famine. And now, in the passage that we're going to read tonight, uh, Joseph's brethren come to Egypt to get food that they needed back in the land of Canaan. And then Joseph is going to present himself, and they're going to see that that's their brother. And uh, they're very much afraid because they recognize that it is his brother and that he had the power to put them to death, but he didn't do that. He told them, that they were to go back to the land of Canaan and they were to get all of their families. And he gave them wagons and he gave them everything they needed to be able to go back to Canaan to get their brothers and their daddy and bring them back to Egypt so that they would have uh, plenty during those seven years of famine. So we'll begin reading now in Genesis chapter 45 beginning in verse 16. Genesis chapter 45 beginning in verse 16. The word of God says, And the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come, and it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Say unto thy brethren, This do ye, laid your beasts, and go, get you unto the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Now thou art commanded this do ye, take you wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Isn't that amazing that Pharaoh would manifest so much love to Joseph's brethren and Joseph's daddy? Verse, thir verse 20. And regard not your stuff, for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. In other words, don't try to bring everything you've got back there in the land of Canaan. We're going to provide everything for you when you get back here to Egypt. Verse 21 says, And the children of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and gave them provision for the way. To all of them he gave each man changes of raiment, but to Benjamin he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of raiment. And to his father he sent after this manner ten asses laden with the good things of Egypt and ten she-asses laden with corn and bread and meat for his father by the way. So he sent his brethren away and they departed and he said unto them, See that ye fall not out by the way. I want us to think about that last expression in verse 24 where Joseph told his brothers, See that thou, or see that ye fall not out by the way. They were going on a long journey. You remember that when they went from, originally when they went from Egypt to the land of Canaan, you remember that uh, because of their sin, they ended up wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. 
So they knew it was a long, treacherous journey from Egypt to Canaan. And now uh, Joseph is sending them from Egypt uh, to Canaan and then to get their families and come back. So they're talking about twice the trip that they originally were given to go from Egypt to the land of Canaan. And he says, now on this journey, you're going to have a long and a difficult journey as you go back and you get your brethren and you bring them back to Egypt. On that journey, see that ye fall not out by the way. Now that expression, fall not out, can have two different meanings. As you study the meaning of the word fall out, sometimes people have a falling out. What do you think that means, that... Uh, Two people might have a falling out. What would that mean? Scrapping. Say it again. They're scrapping. Okay. Uh, they're putting scrapbooks together. Scrapping. <laughs> well, explain what scrapping is. Fighting, fighting. Very good. Fighting among themselves. So he says, uh, see that ye fall not out. Don't be falling out. Don't be fighting with each other. That was a common problem that those brothers had, was fighting with each other. And now Joseph, as he sends them back, uh, to Canaan land to get their father and their, all of their families. He says, see that ye fall not out. Don't, don't get uh, to fighting and arguing and scrapping. Don't get into a big argument with each other. Your brothers, now go back and just get your families and come back here to Egypt for you to have all the blessings that we have here in Egypt. See that thou fall not out. Don't fall out with each other. That's a command that all of us ought to have. The Bible says that as much as possible that we're to live peaceably among all men. Don't be falling out. Don't be scrapping. Don't be fighting. Don't fall out with, especially, don't be falling out with your brethren. Don't be arguing with your brethren. The other way that you can look at that expression, falling out, is that sometimes on a journey, people get very tired, weak, and weary, and faint on that journey, and they fall out, that is, they they're not able to keep going because they're exhausted on that journey. That's the main way I want us to look at it tonight, is that Joseph was telling his brethren, don't give up. Go back to Egypt, go back to Canaan rather, go back to Canaan and get your families and bring them back here to Egypt. And don't give up, no matter how difficult the way is, no matter how many problems you have along the way, you remember that when you do get back, Remember that you're going to have everything that you need here in Egypt. So we as the people of God, we need to remember that as we journey uh, toward Canaan land, and that's, of course, they were going to Canaan land and back. But when we journey toward the kingdom of heaven, that sometimes on that journey, sometimes we get weak and weary and faint and tired. Uh, sometimes even getting up on Sunday morning. And coming to the house of God. Sometimes that's a difficult task. When you're not feeling real well. Or you haven't slept well. Or you've had a lot of sickness and other problems during the week. Sometimes it's hard just to get to the house of God. Doesn't seem like a long journey. But that sometimes is the most difficult journey that you have. Is to get up on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. And come to the house of God. So that's a journey that we have. There are many other journeys. There are many other ways that we, as a people of God, have been taught that we're to go out and we're to bring other people to the house of God. We're to encourage other people to come to the house of God. Uh, bring them. Just like those brothers were going to go to the land of Canaan and they were going to bring their families back to Egypt, we as a people of God, we need to be bringing other people to the house of God and we ought not to be weary or faint in doing that. See that thou fall not out by the way. You remember when the Apostle Paul was uh, teaching and speaking to King Agrippa. There was uh, a lot of ways that he began to talk to Agrippa. And Agrippa makes this statement. He says, almost, what? Almost thou hast persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Now, he fell out, by the way. Do you, you follow the analogy there? He gave up. He was almost persuaded to be a Christian, but he was not fully persuaded. Paul said, I wish you were both all together and completely persuaded to be a Christian. But uh, King Agrippa did not become a Christian, and that was uh, him falling out, giving up, 
rather than taking that step. He wasn't uh, in Mark chapter 12, the Word of God tells us about a scribe that knew a lot about the Word of God. And as he was talking with Jesus, Jesus made the statement to him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of heaven. Now, he had a little further ways to go. And so it could be said to that man, just as Joseph said to these brethren, See that thou fall not out by the way. Keep on going, because it's not much further. You're not far from the kingdom of heaven. And I think that's true in the life of most every child of God, that when we begin to work and labor and serve the Lord, keep the commandments of God, serve the people of God, sometimes we get tired. We need to remember, don't fall out, by the way. Don't give up. Keep going, keep serving, because you're not far, no matter how much you're working, you're not far from the kingdom of heaven. Go with me in your Bibles now to Matthew chapter 26. Peter, James, and John were very special apostles. They were apostles that uh, went further than the rest of the apostles. They were apostles that were blessed by Jesus whenever... Jesus went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. The three apostles he took with him were Peter, James, and John. And on this occasion, as Jesus is about to go to the cross of Calvary, he tells his apostles that they need to pray for him. And then he left part of the apostles, but he took Peter, James, and John, and they went even further than the rest of the apostles. They were making a greater effort than the rest of the apostles. Look at Matthew chapter 26. Listen beginning in verse 36. Matthew 26 verse 36. I want you to see that Peter, James, and John, were they great men of God? Were they great men of God? Indeed they were. Did they love the Lord? Did they prove their love for God? Had they left everything to follow Jesus? They had. But we're going to see them fall away by the wayside, fall out by the wayside in this passage of Scripture. Look now at uh, Matthew 26, verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Seek ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and James, Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy, Verse 38 says, Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Did they have a job to do? Did they have a responsibility that Jesus gave them? He says, You stay here. Tarry ye here and watch with me. They were supposed to be praying for him. They were supposed to be waiting for him. The next verse, verse 39 says, and he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Was Jesus on a difficult journey? Was he going down a path or a way that was beyond anything that we can ever begin to imagine? Indeed, he was. And he had asked his apostles, You pray for me when I go a little further. Look at verse 40 now. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep. What have they done? Give me one word before asleep. They what? Fell asleep. They fell asleep. That's the same thing as falling out, by the way. They fell asleep. So they fell asleep, and saith unto Peter, Jesus said to Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Did they know how long he was going to be gone? Did they know he was going to be gone one hour? That's all he was gone the first time, I believe, was one hour. And he came back. They didn't know whether he was going to be gone one hour or five hours or 12 hours. Jesus often prayed all night long. And so after less than an hour, those apostles fell asleep. Those three, the best of the apostles, they fell asleep. Verse 41 says, watch and pray. They enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Why is it that the people of God often fall out by the way? Because the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. I believe with all of my heart that the people of God, there are far more people of God that are willing and desiring to go a lot farther than they go, but the flesh is weak. 
We need to pray, God, help us. We know that our flesh is weak. We understand that our flesh is weak. We're going to be looking in a few minutes, well, what can we do? Even though we know that our flesh is weak, what can we do to keep from falling out by the way? So he goes away now the second time, verse 42. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Was he beginning to be completely reconciled? I'm talking about the man part of Jesus. Was he reconciled to doing whatever the father would have him to do? Indeed he was. Was he willing? What if Jesus, I'm going to ask you this question. What if Jesus had fallen out, by the way. What if he had reached that point? Even when he got on the cross of Calvary, and they began to mock him, and they began to say, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. You say you can save others, you can't even save yourself. I'll tell you what my flesh would have done right then. I would have come down from the cross, and I would have cast them all into hell. That's not what Jesus did. He didn't fall out, by the way. He didn't come down from the cross, even though they were mocking him and telling him that's what he ought to do. Brethren, Jesus went through hell, and I mean that in a figurative way, but he went through an extremely difficult time on the cross of Calvary. And the worst thing was not just the nails being in his hands and the crown of thorns on his head. But the worst thing to me was when all the sins of all the family of God were placed on Jesus. Amen. And in that dark hours, the darkest period of time this world has ever known, Jesus went exactly how far he had to go to save us from our sins. The apostles went a long ways with Jesus, but they didn't go as far as they needed to go. They fell asleep. They fell out by the way. There's a statement, I don't remember right where it is, but it just came to my mind. The Word of God talks about the children of Israel when they were originally going from uh, Egypt to the land of Canaan. The Word of God says that the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. It was a difficult path. The way they were going from Egypt to the land of Canaan was a difficult path. And even when they got to the land of Canaan and began to go into the land of Canaan, there were giants in the land. There were great walled cities. So the way, the path, the course they had to go was extremely difficult. And they could have fallen out by the way. In fact, the first generation did fall out by the way. But the younger generation, they went on into the land of Canaan and inhabited the promised land. So they did not fall out, by the way, when their parents did fall out, by the way. Go with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7, just a moment. There are two ways that you can walk. And it's very similar to what we were trying to study this morning. This morning we tried to study the difference in walking after the flesh versus walking in the spirit. And we need to pray that God will help us every day not to walk after the flesh. Because if we walk after the flesh, we will die. But if we walk after the Spirit, we will live and we'll have life and peace. Matthew chapter 7 gives us two paths that we can go down. Either one. And the majority go down, the majority go down the broad path. Listen to Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I'm going to ask you a question before we begin to look at these two verses of Scripture. Are there going to be many, or are there going to be few? in the eternal heaven when this world is over. Amen. There are going to be many. The word of God says there as the sand of the seashore, there as the stars of heaven, a group of people so great that no man can number out of every nation, kindred, tongue, family, and tribe. There are going to be many people in the, in the eternal heaven when this world is over. Now I'm going to ask you a different question. Are there going to be many or few people in the kingdom of heaven while they live here on this earth? Few. And that's what this verse is talking about, these two verses. These two verses are not talking about you staying on the right path so you get to go to heaven when you die. It's talking about staying on the right path, walking the straight and narrow way so that you can enter into the kingdom of heaven while you live here on this earth. He says, uh, many go in the broad way, but very few go in the straight and narrow way. 
Some people start walking down the straight and narrow way, but then they, give me the, give me the phrase that we're talking about tonight. They fall out, by the way. They start out down the straight and narrow path. They go a ways down the straight and narrow path, but then they fall out by the way. Brethren, I want to warn everybody here, please be careful that you don't fall out by the way. Please be careful that you don't get weak and weary and faint in your minds and that you give up and that you fall out by the way. You can go so far and do so much good and then backslide or worse than that, you can become a reprobate and completely turn away from God. You'll fall out by the way. Matthew chapter 11. Let's talk for a few minutes in closing. Let's talk for a few minutes about what can I do to keep from falling out by the way. What can I do to keep from falling out by the way? Matthew chapter 11. Listen to verses 28 through 30. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. This is... One of the most important things you can do to keep from falling out by the way. Matthew chapter 11, listen to verses 28 through 30. The word of God says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Now when do you get laboring and heavy laden? What, what, what is it you're doing? What's Jesus talking about saying to his disciples that you get, uh, you get full of labor and you're heavy laden? What are you doing? You're on the journey. You're walking the highway. The Bible talks about this way as the highway. You're walking down the straight and narrow way. He says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And then he says to the second thing in verse 29. Do you need to stop sometimes and rest? Do you sometimes need to stop and rest with Jesus? Absolutely. Jesus even made this statement to his apostles on one occasion when they didn't even have time to eat because of all that they were doing, Jesus said, come ye apart and rest a while. Every person here, you're human beings. You're not superhuman. You're human beings, and we as humans, our bodies need to come apart and rest from, for, for, from time to time. He says, after he tells them to come unto me, and I will give you rest, verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now, it's important, we're going to be studying this week in our week of worship and recreation. One of the things we're going to be studying is not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, this verse of scripture says, take my yoke, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We need to pray that God will help us to go to Christ coming to me. That'll help you not fall out by the way. Another way that you can prevent yourself from falling out by the way is by putting on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Put on the whole armor of God. That will keep you from falling out by the way. Another way that you can prevent yourself from falling out by the way is by not forsaking the assembling of yourself in the house of God. The more you miss church, the more likely you are to fall away, to fall out by the way. If you're very, very faithful in your church attendance, the word of God says in uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Coming to the house of God strengthens me. Coming to the house of God and being around my brethren and hearing the word of God, that helps me to not fall out, by the way. I'll promise you that if I were to not have the privilege to be in the house of God, if I were to stop going to church, I believe before long I would fall away, just like many others fall away. Being in the house of God is extremely important. One of the reasons being in the house of God is important is because we hear the word of God. That's another thing that keeps us from falling out, by the way, is to be fit, fed from the Word of God. We need to be able to feast on the Word of God. We need to sit down at the Master's table and feed on the Word of God. That gives me strength uh, to, to keep on the journey. One more thing that you can do every time uh, is that you can love the brethren. Love the brethren. That will help you not fall out, by the way. The more love, the more I feel loved, and the more people that I love, 
See, now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, the greatest of these is charity. That's love in action. The more that you are loving people, listen carefully, the more you are loving people, the less likely you are to, what's the expression? Fall out, by the way, to fall away. Go with me in closing to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. We'll close here in 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, first read verses 13 and 14 and then verses 17 and 18. 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 13 and 14. The Word of God says in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. <clears throat> Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. What was Peter this was written in about 67 A.D., three years before the destruction of Jerusalem and three years before the establishment of the kingdom of heaven. So Peter says we're looking for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Is that what dwells in the kingdom of heaven? Yeah. Righteousness. Verse 14, wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, look at, looking for what? Looking for the kingdom of heaven. See that you're looking for such things. Be, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Come down to verse 17 in closing. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, what? Fall from your own steadfastness. If we don't take heed and if we don't beware, we're going to fall from our own steadfastness. We're going to fall out, by the way. I pray that God will help all of us tonight to realize it's a great blessing to be able to be in the way and to be able to have the strength of God, to feel the strength of God that enables you to keep on going. But always remember, you better beware. Even though the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak, and if you're not careful, You'll fall out, by the way. So what did Joseph say to his brothers? See that ye fall not out, by the way. May God help us to do that. It's my prayer for Christ's sake. When we walk